Well, hello and welcome to the On It, Not In It podcast, the interview series. I'm your host, Todd Eppert, and today I'm joined by Greg Brown, who's the president at Malta Dynamics. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. Would you like to kick us off with a brief background as to who you are and what you do at Malta? Yeah, so uh, I'm Greg. Uh, I'm with Malta Dynamics. We do workplace and construction safety equipment, uh, everything from uh, anchor points, harnesses, lifelines, things like that, everything for everything for safety, uh, glasses, helmets, hard hats, things like that. And uh, I've been with the company since 2018, uh, had a kind of diverse background before that, um, came into the company as a salesperson, uh, enjoyed what I was doing. Um, uh, my first foray into management was with Malta Dynamics. I was named the, uh, the division manager for sales in a uh, in December of 2019. Got my first direct report, uh, and the president of the company at that time uh, unexpectedly passed away in January of 2020. Uh, I was informed by the CEO at uh, four o'clock in the morning that uh, I was next up on the secession plan. Uh, that they had thought that I might be the guy, uh, and so. Uh, two months after getting my first direct report, I was all of a sudden responsible for, for 24 employees in, in a multi-million dollar organization. And so trial by fire is, is kind of where that goes. But, uh, you know, I, I love the company. I love the vision. Um, I like, you know, what we do uh, for, you know, for people in the workplace and things like that. And it's, it's a fun place to be. And, and I'm having the time of my life here. And Greg, thanks so much for sharing that story. Um, yeah, so I love the fact that you're um, you're sharing a story that is fairly common in small business, right? The the leader um, that's in charge that we expect to be around for a while suddenly they're no longer with us for whatever reason. In your case, it was a, um, a heart attack. I think you said it. And they passed, and um, and so suddenly you're thrust into leadership. Like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? <laughs> right? So such a common story in entrepreneurship and in, in the small business world. Um, so thanks for sharing that. We really appreciate it. So you mentioned some um, some things about kind of running the business and jumping in and, and learning with you know as your, as your feet are on fire basically. So tell us a little bit about some of the misconceptions. Maybe the the owner calls you at four o'clock in the morning, says, "Here's what's going on." You probably had some preconceived notions like, "Uh oh, here's what it's going to be like." How are you wrong? Tell us how. Tell us what you thought and what you learned. Yeah, well, you know, nobody came and dropped a BMW off. I didn't start wearing, you know, three-piece suits to work. You know, it was very much uh, fill fill four or five roles for a couple of months. You know, live on airplanes, train people up. Um, you know, get get you know the business to the point where it can sustain what I used to do, uh, so I can start leading it. And then you know, you get into the thing where you you know you jump off the ledge before you see how deep the water is. I had to I had to replace myself. Didn't know that I was going to be the, the you know, the leader long term or, or anything like that. But I did have to replace what I was doing because it was an important part uh, of the business. And really what makes it what made it extremely easy for me uh, was that I believed and bought into the vision for the company that already existed. Um, and we've we've got some earned our auto uh, autonomy here. You know, uh, our enterprise is one of multiple companies and there's a lot of uh, there's there's you know, seven or eight, you know, major businesses within that, the same CEO and, and owner for all of them. And uh, I understood the vision. I believed in the vision just like it was my own. And so it was really easy to adopt that and, and put that into my leadership style. Uh, and, you know, there was, there was a whole lot of bushwhacking to do. There was things that I didn't know, but I always had resources. Uh, I was always given encouragement to go and do the right things and was given freedom where I needed to, to have the freedom uh, and really was able to to kind of see something that was, you know, a company that was that was struggling, um, you know, and the team pulls together and we have the resources and the, and the vision starts to show itself and we start to see success. And that was really fun. You know, the the you know, the the corner turned about three years ago uh, and uh, to be a part of that and to see the team that had been there when when nobody thought it was going to work besides the people in the room uh, to kind of see that start to bloom and, and see the 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 flowers that come out of that it, it's 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 been the highlight of my career excellent excellent so just just for our listeners purposes as well as just a little knowledge so you, you mentioned when you took over as president um in 2019 i think you said it was or 2020 early 2020 um there was about 20 employees so how big are you guys today how many employees are there with multa today so we we've gone through some stuff. We shut down a couple of divisions and, and you know, uh, moved a few things out. You know, right now it's funny. We're about double the revenue uh, that we were when I took over. 
uh, but we've got a couple less employees. You know, we're about 20 full-time employees now, uh, and I think we were 24 when I started. But there was a couple of, you know, divisions that, that, uh, that we kind of had to shut down uh, and move about. And so, you know, we really focus on, you know, you focus on the vision first and doing what you say you're going to do for the people you say you're going to do it for. Um, and then you really start looking at efficiencies. Uh, you, and, you know, data is, is the number one driver. I stopped having opinions uh, is the day that I had enough data to not have to have them. And so, we, you know, we make we make our decisions and we make our plans based on the things that we know. And in, in, in our company, uh, um, if you don't know them and you need to make a leap of faith, you know, that's a team effort. So we uh, we really rely on the data and you know, make our future plans according to things that we don't think can fail. And we just throw everything at it. Yeah, so I love that story, that part of your story as well. So uh, here's a successful business. You take it over. But as a team, you kind of go through and say, hey, maybe we're not as healthy in all segments of the business as we should be. And if we can uh, can be bold enough, maybe and courageous enough to cut a little bit of the things that it's always hard to cut revenue, cut customers, cut any kind of divisional. Uh, but then if we can trim the bush back, man, it can grow much even even bigger, stronger, better. So double the productivity with about the same amount of people. Uh, that's a phenomenal story. So uh, that's a great piece to share with our listeners. Thanks for that. Yep. So, so uh, been a few years, you're starting to probably get your sea legs. And you said the team three years ago really started to really get it. So what are your biggest challenges today? What are the next things you're facing? You know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. I think the challenge today is, is to not look at, at who's come before you and try to duplicate what they've done. Um, it's, it's to kind of see where the big players are missing their mark, you know, and, and we won't have that advantage forever because we plan on being one of those big players here, you know, here really soon. And, and when we picked off a few competitors along the way, which, you know, we're very proud of, um, but, you know, we're, we're looking for, for where others are underserving uh, and we're looking to see, you know, what the market is. And, you know, one of our major products and is, is just something that not a whole lot of people make. Um, and we make it and, and, and a couple of other competitors do uh, the, the demand for that is growing and, and we're having a really fun time. You know, we got into renting equipment, you know, and, and so that's been a really nice, really nice thing for us. And it teaches you to get really good at logistics uh, and shipping products where they need them. And it's things that are in high demand. Um, we just, you know, we, we really just listen to the customers. We, our, uh, our tagline is field tested, field approved. Uh, and the field is also where we get all of our best ideas. We just do what customers need. Uh, we surpass their expectations and they just keep coming back. And, and I, you don't think that's magic talking about it right now, but the light bulb certainly goes off uh, when you see, when you see something happening because, of, because a customer asked for it and you deliver. Man, you know, I, again, I love that. So, so we've got this constant evolving business landscape. Everybody's worried about AI and, you know, we went, we lived through a pandemic first time in a hundred years and all this stuff. And all you're talking about really is just listening to your customers and taking really good care of them. And that's how you grow a business. So are there any other specific strategies along that, along that venue that you're willing to share or how you stay innovative? Are there things you're doing to stay innovative on that customer side or on your product side or on your rental equipment side? Yeah. You know, it's funny. We, we, uh, the rental side is, is kind of the, the one that's growing the most right now. Um, but you know, it's, it's being, being everywhere that you need to be without, without pulling yourself too thin. And it's, it, it's always, you know, it's tough to figure out where that is. You know, it's like, you know, where do you want to be on e-commerce more? Do you want to be, you know, upfront in front of customers more? Do I want to hit every regional trade show and speak to every safety professional in the country and you know what's the best thing? And, and I'm not going to pretend that we know uh, what that is, but, you know, we find, you know, we find things and we try to do them better and we try to be honest and, and, you know, and that's the thing, you know, it really comes down to, to the business core values uh, that we uphold those and stay true to the original vision of the business. And, not only do I agree with it, I, I think I think customers really appreciate that, too. Um, and it's just, you know, understanding where you can spend what you can spend to get what you want to get. You know, it's marketing is a, is a tough thing. You hear the term AI. Well, what does that mean for your business? And and, you know, where can that give you advantages? Because, you know, we have these huge established, you know, big competitors that have been doing this for 40 years. Well, well, what are they paying attention to? What can they afford? What can't they afford to pay attention to? Um, I sometimes think of us like the uh, like the shrimp boat in Forrest Gump. All the big ones went down, right? And uh, 
and old Jenny, she's just small enough just to go through the waves and turn a little faster. And so while we have that advantage, we're certainly taking advantage of that, moving faster than the competition. Uh, our ears are a little closer to the customer. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to try to make the best products that we can in the most efficient ways um, that we can do it and, and fulfill customer needs with the best customer service in the game. That's as old as business is, you know, good customer service, great products, uh, and a willingness to be there when nobody else can get there. It's not new. Uh, and, and, you know, you can do that with AI or you can do it without AI. You got to pay attention to the landscape, but you can't ever let anything replace good customer service and great quality products. Well, I, it, I love all that, but the most important thing I think you said was that I, what I, what I referenced when I picked up there is, Many companies, they would let's say they would list themselves as a small company, and they would say that means we don't have the resources to invest in the things that some of our competitors. They look at the limiting side. You've turned it into a strength. You're talking about being nimble. You're talking about being closer to the customer. Those are those are ways to look at your characteristics and turn everything that you are into a strength, and then play off of that. So I really really love that part of your story there. I, I didn't know that, and that's a that's a cool one to hear. And I know a lot of our small business owners that listen to this podcast will resonate with that. How do I turn my my characteristics into a strength rather than a weakness in the marketplace? So it's fantastic. Yep. So um, without sharing any specific, you know, uh, numbers or any kind of uh, strategic things that would that would be give any, you know, uh, open the books too much for anybody of our listeners. Are there anything that you could share about your future plans? You mentioned that you're trying to be a big boy out there, trying to be a bigger player. You've also talked about taking out some competitors. I don't want to know any names. I don't want to know any specific strategies, but do you have any goals that you could share with our listeners? Yeah. You know, um, we, we live in a, in a highly regulated industry, right? And so there's uh there's OSHA is, is the boogie band that everybody's running from. Um, it's also like, we should be really happy that we have OSHA because there are other countries with much more stringent safety regulations and, and can really hamper productivity. But, you know, we, we live in a world where OSHA and, and names like uh, ANSI, which is the American National Standards Institute, um, you know, the way I talk about it with our customers is is ANSI is who is who, you know, kind of we make our products by and OSHA is the law that you have to use the products by. And so, you know, there's ever changing, ever changing, you know, manufacturing specifications. Um, you know, there's there's new things that come out. We, we try to stay on top of them. You know, right now, uh, a couple of big trends in construction and safety is uh, is head protection. Uh, and so, you know, the general, you know, the old, same old hard hats everybody's been using for 40 years. Uh, I'm not saying that they're phased out or that they're going to be phased out. But the next level in head protection is is kind of uh, making itself known which is, um, you know, something that's protecting from the top down. Also, the sides impact uh, can reduce, you know, traumatic brain injuries and also has a, has a strap that kind of stays attached. And, you know, it's funny, the thing that's there to protect your head can, can quickly become a falling object and, and a hazard to somebody else in the area. So um, that's a big thing we're developing. Uh, we're developing, you know, trying to make some of the best hard hats and, and head protection for the next level of safety. Uh, kind of the thing that we're finding uh, is that is that these helmets that came over from Europe, they don't offer as much sun protection uh, and they're not stylized to the American worker. And so we get a little bit of pushback on that. So uh, we're currently putting the final touches. We'll have it ready uh, in the summertime of a product that looks like a traditional hard hat, but provides uh, all the safety features of the new stuff. So I think we'll get less pushback from workers who, who, you know, I put this sticker on here in 2012 um, and, uh, and, and I'm not changing my hard hat. It, it looks a little bit more like a, like a full brim hard hat. That's pretty cool. Uh, we also are really ramping up technology on our self-retracting lifelines. And so uh, that's, you know, that's something that's, that's big in, in fall protection. It's much better than the old fall protection lanyards, which is much better than the old uh, belt with a rope attached to it. Right. So, <laughs> Uh, we've got the best performing self-retracting lifelines right now that that's on the market uh, that, you know, that we're aware of. Make sure that the lawyers don't come after me. Right. So, uh, we, you know, on that, you really focus on the stopping distance and you focus on the forces to the body uh, so that if you do fall, it's short and it's soft and you can get back to doing what you were doing. So, you know, right now we've got we've got probably about the best performing one. It stops. Uh, it falls shorter and falls softer than the competition. So we're excited to uh, 
to kind of capitalize on that and excited to introduce these hard hats and you know our mobile fall protection line and, and our, our rentals across the united states is something that's that's pretty cool you know we're in we're in the united arab emirates uh with with some exclusive distribution deals so we're getting outside of the outside of the north american continent too so i mean i could keep going there's at least a half a dozen things that, that make me smile about where the business is going it's it's a great time to be here yeah excellent thanks for sharing that craig again pivoting back to that last conversation we had about the small business that you are you're not a multi-billion dollar company you're not even a hundred million dollar company and yet you're nope. changing the industry in helmet protection and safety fall protection uh, and then you're actually going outside of the, 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 the continental United States. You're growing your business internationally. These are huge moves for a small business. And it's a global marketplace and you're taking advantage of it. It sounds to me like the, the helmet technology, and I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I certainly don't have to go into the details, but it sounds like you found a better product in Europe, brought it to the U.S., had some issues with the workforce and made some modifications to make it better for the U.S. workforce and therefore taking advantage of that. It sounds like that's what you guys have done, which is great. Yeah, it's fun. The, the whole industry is kind of going that way. And, and so we're, you know, we, we can't say field tested, field approved and, and then make a product that's that's not what the field wants. And yeah. so we're we're, uh, we're making what they want. And I'm excited. I can't wait to wear them around job sites. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate your time so far. I got one more question for you, Greg. So think about, you know, all the journey that you've been on. What advice would you uh, offer to aspiring entrepreneurs maybe that are getting started? maybe stepping into a small business and leadership role like you did that are kind of questioning or struggling a little bit, or maybe hitting against a wall, what would you encourage them with? Well, I'll, I'll say this. Um, the ego is your, is the enemy. Uh, you, you can never know everything. Um, and you can, you, you need to be humble. You need to understand where, where the, where the help is coming from. Sometimes it comes from unlikely sources. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's always your responsibility to uh to learn and get better um i i was fortunate enough to have leadership in my organization that gave me a business coach uh and invested in me as a leader understanding that i i just didn't have you know, i may have had i might have had the drive uh might have had the aptitude but i did not have the polish and, and maybe i don't now and maybe i never will and that's probably okay um but you know if, if you're humble and you're friendly uh, and you help focus your team and let them know that you appreciate them putting in the hours and going the extra mile. You do it alongside of them. Uh, just humility is is really the big thing. And, uh, you know, I've got a business coach um, and, and uh, we don't we don't work together anymore. But he gave me a quote and I wrote it down and I actually made it into a poster and hung it on my wall uh, in the office and said, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's fair. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is hitting the goal. So be patient when you have to stay steady and win. That, that, that's paraphrasing it. It was a, much more eloquent the way that he put it. Um, but I put that on my wall. And, and every time you think, oh, you know, this isn't going the exact way that I thought. It's like, hey, I mean, it's just you got to find another way to hit the goal. That's what you have to do. And so that and, you know, I would say, you know, I, I live my life for, for my wife and kids. Right. And, and I always have time for them. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm fortunate to have have a good support system at work and at home. Uh, and uh, able, I'm able to have a really good life, um, spend the time where I need to spend the time and uh, just just enjoying the ride. And I think we're going to multi dynamics is going to be a big name. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Greg, thanks again so much for joining us today. We really appreciate the insight. Learning about you, learning about Malta. Thank you for sharing as much as you did. We really appreciate it. It was great learning about you and meeting you today. Uh, so to everyone watching, we look forward to uh, seeing you and hearing you on our next episode. Greg, thanks again. Thanks so much. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I want to hit pop.